Welcome to 5050 Books, the book review podcast where the books are split in two and figuring out just what is going on is always a toss up. I'm Taylor. And I'm Jonathan. We are reading Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts by Kate Raculia. And for this episode, we read up to, but not including, chapter 10, Takeout and Delivery. All right, so let's get started with some first impressions. What are your initial thoughts and feelings uh, about the first half of this book, Taylor? Uh, Well, a good cover always excites me, obviously. Mm -hmm. Added benefit, we actually picked it together, as in in the same location together. How exciting. (laughs) I know, I know. At a bookstore. (laughs) The vibes were right. The vibes were there. It was. It was, it was honestly a totally different experience, not having to just like search through Goodreads pages to find a book and being like, that thing looks cool. Let's look at it. Oh, it is cool. Let's read it. <laughs> Feels very old school. Yeah. Honestly, we should do it more, to be honest, because... Yeah, I agree. <laughs> getting into it, it, it's actually pretty all right so far. I mean, I have my gripes. I always do. But it's actually kind of fun. And I think that might be because of the puzzle aspect. I love a good puzzle, but... I'm enjoying myself. What about you? Yeah, I have to agree. Uh, the setup for the story gives 39 clues, which is nothing I'll ever complain about. So, <laughs> so I was pretty excited by by uh, by the concept, and I'm excited to see where it goes. And excited by the mystery, though. I have to say, I feel like I'm much worse at figuring out what's going on in this story <laughs> than maybe some other mysteries I've read in the past. But it is cool. Yeah, I think also because we didn't see it on Goodreads. Like, obviously, there's the mystery aspect, but I I don't know if it's actually paranormal or not, and I cannot tell yet either yeah. if it is. So it's, it's very hard to figure out exactly what's going on because we don't really have that information. I like that it lets us theorize about that for sure, because I have... I have no idea either. I've not looked at the Goodreads page for it, and I don't think the back of the book says anything about it. But also, the name of the book is Tuesday Mooney Talks to Ghosts, right? So it kind of implies that there would be, but there's no guarantee, even based on what's in the story so far, like not even a lot of strong evidence. So like it's something we'll get into when we theorize, but it's it's nice to not know that much. And it's nice, too, that we... um. We've been interested in having a book that is uh, queer, which technically our last one was, but this one uh, we didn't try and it has prominent queer characters in it. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. I mean, we can get into, you know, how that might go and the vibes yeah. they give off, but <laughs> we did yes. get somebody queer, a couple queer characters. So I guess that's progress. <laughs> It's just nice when you don't have to look for an LGBTQ tag. Because when we yeah. were in the bookstore, we were like, oh, man, like, I don't think they really have, like, a specific queer section, right? I was like, oh, it'd be nice, you know, to go and, like, find a book in a section like that. Um, so it's kind of nice to remind myself that we're in an age of literature where queer characters can just exist in a book, uh, even if that's not, like, a super common thing still. But mm-hmm. it does happen. So just getting into this book, I guess, uh, we it's actually pretty dated i mean the book is new obviously but the events of this book are pretty dated we have the prologue which is in 2006 and then the main story is in 2012 but talking about the prologue it does immediately set off like those paranormal spooky vibes we get the classic haunted house with the tillerman house bought by an usher which i was like we got poe vibes also going on here (laughs) yeah and it only gets more intense from there (laughs) with the poe vibes for sure, it's very direct. That was a good early catch, though, because I didn't notice it at first. Even this, I was, I thought the house was going to become like the main character, kind of, because there it might be haunted. Um, we can't really tell, but then it <laughs> it doesn't get brought back up until Dory's report, like a hundred pages later. So don't know what's going on with that. Also, not one hundred percent proof who Usher is, but because of Dory's re- report, I'm pretty sure it's it's vince price which is the yeah. one who runs the puzzle in the in the story so i went back and tried to like read some of it i didn't read reread the whole chapter but i reread a little of it before we recorded because i was like i wonder if he was wearing a cape <laughs> that's mm. what i was looking for um at least in the parts that i read it did not mention a cape but i didn't read the whole thing over yeah i honestly figured out the price thing because Usher asks the realtor, agent, whoever it is, he's like, uh, would you per- permit me a question or something like that? He uses weird wordage to ask a question at the oh. beginning. And he does the same thing with Dex or he Vince does, does the same point. thing with Dex during the fundraiser. 
and we'll get into the fundraiser index and all of that. But I was like, oh, this is probably the same. Jumping into the story, though, we get to 2012. We're in Boston. We meet our main character, Tuesday Mooney, who, as you imagine, is not like other girls. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be mistaken. Yeah. I feel like this was... It could have been more aggressive about that than it was, but it's definitely the case. Yeah, I think it's completely normal now for, like, main character females, not necessarily to be gothic, that's not what I'm saying, but, like, to give off this kind of energy, you know, closed off, like, they don't trust people, like, they got something going on, right? Right. Or they should have something going on. I don't think Tuesday is actually that untrusting even though she says like trust no one i don't think she actually yeah. lives by that because she trusts jory a lot and she even does like trust dex to to a degree and very quickly realizes his worth um as her friend which i'm glad about because i was worried about that mm -hmm. relationship to be honest but yeah she's like supposed to be in this she's like gothic you know she gives the wednesday adams vibes yeah yeah she's from a non-conservative family except in certain regards the, the author even mentioned the uh wednesday adam things adams thing too and i was like oh i think you just told us all how you named your character well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah i also think the un the uh, untrusting thing is interesting because i do feel like she trusts archie i guess a little bit more than she should pretty early on with both her, like her own personal details and like the puzzle part so when we talk about the fundraiser we can get more into it but i i do think you're right that she's not quite as untrusting as she says yeah like there is a certain level of trust i feel when entering into a puzzle competition for like <laughs> millions of dollars yeah well maybe not because the black cats a group that comes up later has like 66 members right and i'm like that's crazy like 66 i, I feel wanna... like in a situation like this yeah like people always do that stuff and like convince themselves that people are going to share the pot when it comes down to the end and that's not going to happen ever like i don't think there's ever a situation where that's the truth so i just think people always convince themselves you know yeah but tuesday working with anybody i think makes sense through her actions but through her words i feel like already she's kind of contradicting herself which isn't a bad thing mm -hmm. i feel like your actions usually prove more so how you are as a person than your words anyway yeah and it's not a bad thing to build trust with people so yes yes you should be trusting your friends and like you know certain colleagues like even to if it's to differing degrees but mm -hmm. yeah she's been friends with dex for like what is it almost a decade or something right <laughs> he only enters her home for the first time in this story i know yeah crazy yeah speaking yeah, so maybe in that way she's not super trusting like man can't even invite the guy over yeah and dex by the way is the gay best friend clearly <laughs> yes oh my god right on the nose yeah i got the vibe when they were chatting and then it came out that he was gay and i was like oh okay <laughs> like ah uh, yes this it was pretty sense. clear yeah but what does Tuesday do? She stalks people on the internet, basically. <laughs> for a good reason. She yeah. does like fundraising for the hospital she works at. I think it's a specific hospital, right? Yes, I believe so. So she stalks like wealthy people who obviously have a lot of money to burn, who can go to these kinds of things. Honestly, I agree. I believe in her. Good use of this sort of <laughs> ability, honestly. Absolutely. And so our first like event and also a lot of the characters kind of come together in this fundraising moment. It's where Dex ends up showing up because his business is like a part of it kind of and he takes somebody else's name on the list. Tuesday's obviously there because she's working it and we get Archie who shows up. Uh, Nathaniel Arches? Arches, right? Is their last name? Arches, yeah. With the ES. Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't remember for a second. Yeah, Nathaniel Arches. Um, is who Tuesday believes is there. Not that he ever introduces himself, but she seems to recognize him. When she tells everyone, like, I don't even think I actually got his name. I was like, man, I I did not catch that at all. <laughs> I would have just believed that. I, I would have believed that he did introduce himself because she's just referring to him as Nathaniel the whole time. Yeah, I also like, I mean, we can get into it more with what act what happens with that whole situation. But like, the fact that it's not Nathaniel is still mind blowing to me. Like I don't know how else to <laughs> no. put it. It's yep. a yep. crazy turn of events there. It but is a crazy turn of events. I agree. They're a little flirty, you know. They're hanging out. Mm -hmm. 
who else is there? Uh, Vince Price is there. And his wife, Lila, is there. Or Lyle. She goes by either, I think, in the book. Dex becomes friends with uh, Lila and, by association, Vince. Speaking of gay best friends. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the, the energy there was very much... I mean, I loved it. I was, like, really liking the interaction between Dex and, and Lila a lot. But it was definitely giving, like, oh, man, like, <laughs> he, he, a gay man and, and this woman he found at this fundraiser are becoming besties. Mm-hmm. Ooh, shocker. Yeah, but it was fun. Yeah. Yeah, Dex, I think he's very much needed in this book because yeah. Tuesday is certainly not giving us good energy. And then Archie <laughs> has his own mess going on, to be honest. Exactly. Yeah. No, it was. It, it made me sad that he wasn't kind of part of the immediate parts after the fundraiser. It's yeah, like, why is he not here? He's he is that energy. We need it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And at the fundraiser, Vince and Archie kind of have a bidding war, and then Vince uh fucking dies. <laughs> I was so confused in this scene. Is like what was happening? I was like, did he just collapse? I mean, obviously we they explained, but I was like, did he just collapse? Did someone hurt him? Like, what is going on? And also, he like faked everyone out first <laughs> just very confused yeah it was weird because he like gets up and i can't remember if he says something or he just starts screaming or something yeah and then he like laughs about it and then he dies or so- something to that effect like it does seem like a fake out at first and then he's just dead and lila and dex obviously try to help him but yeah he's like it's over for him it was it was crazy actually wild yeah it, it made me like wonder especially with the stuff that comes right after the fundraiser with him announcing the competition like if he planned his death <laughs> like i don't know if that's something he knew or if he knew it was coming or i don't know it, it was giving and especially because the competition was like ready to go i don't know i guess you could have just made that ready to go whenever but it was all very weird yeah i mean with the fact that we don't like vince's collection uh just to touch on that it's very ghost related right and mm-hmm. the fact that we don't know how paranormal this book is, he could very well have known he was going to die. I think it's more likely he is just like death accepting and like he kind of yeah. al- always had this ready to go and was just ready for any moment in which it might happen. That's my take. If it's like a realistic book and it doesn't have ghosts and shit in it, that would be my take. He was just ready, you know? But there could be like a twist where he he knew something, right? Because of if we do the paranormal route, it could happen. She also ends up, she has access to hospital records, right? So I don't know how much information she can get. But Crazy, by something. the way. Yeah, if you have She's access like, to I'm not records, breaking the rules. Yeah, <laughs> it's right. Yeah, I don't think uh, in any real version of this that someone would have access to hospital records like that. That definitely sounds fake. Well, I think she said she has it because... She can use it to look things up for her job. But I feel like, well, I guess it depends on how like deep the records go, right? Because if it's just if somebody's born, is that is that breaking like your, your oath or whatever or like your privacy? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I would think that the fact that someone visited a hospital at a certain date or time is private information. And if mm. I, I can't imagine any of the information she has access to i mean i think the only reason she has access to it is because these people have visited the hospital as patients so i don't know it doesn't seem right to me that she would be able to access that information that is reliant on them being patients yeah regardless her trying to justify it as if she's doing her job is also incorrect like she's doing it for personal (laughs) reasons regardless so even if it was fine to do it for her work she's not doing it that way oh yeah oh yeah her being tuesday by the way we're talking about tuesday and archie in this situation so price dies the night is over it's ruined as it should be somebody (laughs) died yeah they're literally like lamenting in the office the next day like oh if only we could have sold more things but vince just had to go ahead and die so Uh, yeah (laughs) and then is it that day Dex reaches out and tells Tuesday about the puzzle starting, which is yeah. the puzzles from um, Price's obituary, his obit. Exactly. Yeah, I think it is the next day because I'm pretty sure the newspaper publishes the obituary the next day. They're like, they're like he died. And also, like, we have a duty to tell you this information he wants us to tell you. <laughs> so Yeah. So in the obituary, it's kind of like some interesting points about it that I'll note is he wanted, like, multiple people to partake in it. 
So he doesn't just care about one person winning and like getting everything he has. Like Mm -hmm. it does very much seem like he wants to share the things he has. Um, I think because he realized he just was so wealthy, it was like unfathomable. Like at some point, it's like nobody needs this much stuff, Mm -hmm. right? And also kind of, there might also be this kind of want for people to appreciate like the art and this adventurous spirit, um, which he got to partake in. And he kind of wants to bring that to other people. I think that's also part of it. Uh, And then we get our first hint in it, which was the hideous heart line, which I picked Mm -hmm. up as being Poe related. And then Dory kind of takes that and runs with it. She's real MVP. She cites this off. Yeah. No, shout out to Dory for setting them off on the right foot and then being able to participate in none of it. (laughs) Yeah. 14, but yeah she picked up on the pattern of the valentine's day like articles so quickly and also the fact that it was like the first line of each something something whatever she did i would not have gotten that in a few hours which is what she basically did it was crazy yeah her strength shows right off the bat and then of course comes back around later with her like 30 page report or whatever but yeah she's a, a bit undervalued for sure yeah and dory is tuesday's neighbor dory lives there with her dad she kind of thinks of tuesday as a friend uh because she has like no other friends but yeah she is 14 it's it is a little <laughs> dangerous for her to yeah. to be I get out it for sure but it just seems a little unfair to her <laughs> absolutely because uh, tuesday just kind of was like oh thank you for this great revelation i'm gonna go ahead and pocket that and use it myself <laughs> for sure and even like even when dory is quote unquote off the team and tuesday is like i'm not gonna involve her anymore tuesday still takes the report Mm -hmm. like dory compiles information on price and like gives summation of his collection which is how we find out about him owning the tillerman house and like uh some other interesting things he owns and she gives it to tuesday and tuesday like takes it and then like says nothing about it she kind of implies that dory could continue to participate in a low-key fashion right i think she called her like a, a silent teammate or something like that so I feel like she's not really 100% discouraging Dory, just kind of emphasizing the fact that she won't be physically doing things with her. Mm, it's just crazy because Tuesday agrees in her own head that Dory's dad is like doing the right thing. Like it is dangerous in the city of Boston for a 14 year old girl to be running around searching for clues from a dead man. Like it's a little crazy absolutely. to do that. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be crazy for anybody to do that, but especially a 14-year-old girl, you know? Uh, she should be she should be in her physics class. She should not be running around Boston. <laughs> right. Well, so, like, not Tuesday, stop her anyway. But. I know, I know. Tuesday accepting that from the dad, but then also being like, like, is she against it or not? Yeah, no, it's a little shady. It is. Like, cut her off and be, say, like, stop looking into it. Like, be safe. I'll still give you the money. Like, I don't need all this. Yeah. But, like, don't get involved. That would be a good take, I think, but like still having her help, but then also agreeing that she should not be helping. A little weird. I guess if Dory doesn't know what any of the next clues are, she can't help anyway. So maybe Tuesday thought the report was kind of like the last bit Dory could have done. Mm-hmm. But newsflash, right. Dory <laughs> figures some stuff out. Yeah, I was going to say it's all the assumption that she's not going to just do it herself, which I guess I, I can understand since they're not communicating about it, how she would land at that conclusion, but not how it's gonna go but moving back uh slightly we do have tuesday quickly having dory help her with the obit and the articles which lead to the tunnel uh before that though archie does just show up at tuesday's apartment which is absolutely unhinged creep behavior (laughs) but it's okay because it's a romance well, I think also because the justification is like, well, Tuesday knows all sorts of people's home addresses that she's probably not supposed to know. But she makes the very like clear distinction in that she does not go to their house, though. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. It is very different. And also, this might be controversial. He is a man showing up to a woman's house, oh, like her apartment, yeah, I hear you. in which she lives alone. Like there is it's that's not absolutely look. not okay yeah but don't worry he's hot so it's fine <laughs> well yeah that's where a lot of this stuff gets chalked up to that but he basically wants to hire tuesday to help him 
I thought this was weird because as Tuesday does note, he has so much fucking money, he should be able to hire a bunch of people to help him solve this. So why Tuesday? Mm -hmm. And I was thinking it's because he doesn't want his family to know is the conclusion I came to. With the later context, that's definitely got to be it. With later context, for sure, he doesn't want his family to know. So he shows up, eats their food, uh, and then goes with Tuesday to the subway tunnel. Mm -hmm. And that's where they find the first... It's not a cl- is it a clue? I guess I would they find say this- it's a clue. It's a yeah, because it leads them to an actual clue, right? But I would say it's a clue. Yeah, they find the scroll buried behind a brick wall. They also see the mannequin hanging up, which is based on the cask of blah blah blah, whatever the fuck it's called. Oh, a cask of a amontillado. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> it is mentioned in this book a few times though, and. When Tuesday thought she saw Abby, her her best friend Abby, Oof. behind that wall, I thought, are we reading a horror book? Yeah. No, I was actually horrified by that because I definitely thought it was real. Like, I thought that was what was happening in that moment. So For sure. It, it got me really good. And yeah, I, I was like, how could it, how could this possibly have something to do with the puzzle part of the story? <laughs> like, how could Vince's thing have to do with Abby's body and there's there was a lot of questions for a moment there and i actually like stopped reading for a moment when i read that so (laughs) i did a lot of theorizing that's not amounting to anything because of it yeah because we figure it wasn't actually abby it was just a mannequin Mm -hmm. but tuesday obviously has some trauma and uh they get a scroll which has a bunch of different symbols on it um some are like zodiac some are alchemical like it's the normal like occult we talked about this during episode 13 it's the normal occult uh gathering of the symbols basically and tuesday is then kind of abandoned by archie and she gets arrested this part was screwed up (laughs) for sure (laughs) she was right to be pissed at him because yeah like why does he get to leave like why not why why is it that one person had to get arrested here i feel like zero people could have been arrested (laughs) Honestly. That's true. Yeah, if he was able to get away, they maybe both would have been able to get away. But I, I feel like this might be, you know, I don't agree with Archie often, but in this scenario, it is actually very good he did not get arrested here. Regardless of whether he's Archie or if he was Nathaniel in that scenario, like I, as Tuesday, would not want to be caught with Nathaniel Arches. Mm, I guess that's a good point. Like, I think it makes sense that he would also not want to be caught and arrested because it would be on the news. And I feel like it would be an even bigger deal. Well, and it'll tell whoever deal. he doesn't want to know. Yeah. 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 It'd, it'd be even bigger than it ended up being. And I would not want to be the woman associated with him <laughs> um, yeah. solving this puzzle. I feel like that'd make things even worse. But no, of that's course, a really that's good point. super logical from me who was not in that moment. But uh, it does make sense Tuesday was also like felt betrayed by that situation. But also they just met. So yeah well the real betrayal i think comes after the fact so we'll we'll get around to it but yeah oh there's one thing i just realized i didn't mention when archie shows up to the apartment um he has a check right oh yes for the new kids on the block tickets he like yeah seemed to ghost the fundraiser but then he showed up with the check right so i, I mean i think the reason he ends up supposedly ghosting the fundraiser is because it wasn't him but yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was it wasn't under his actual name but I, it made me wonder if the check that he brought had his actual name on it yeah i don't remember if it said i feel like it would have said if it you yeah know, was him i feel like maybe it was like a business account though is what i was thinking that's a good point yeah because i was like man that would have given it away right there <laughs> him getting arrested also would have given it away right there but yeah so maybe it yeah, it was just under like the arch's name or under their business or yeah. something. I just to like that imagine effect. this check being in Tuesday's pocket <laughs> and like having his <laughs> actual name on it and her just not knowing it. Not realizing, yeah. Yeah. And then we do get some of Dex's POV during this. Him feeling is this the moment he feels kind of jealous that he's left out? I think so, yes. I think so, yeah. Because it's really only this first part of the story that he's not included in the puzzle solving. Yeah, which un- actually understandable from him. But I was also really surprised about how adult he was about it. Mm-hmm. Because he did tell Tuesday, but he didn't ask to solve it with her. Like, he didn't reach out about helping her with it. So He totally handed it off to her. So I get it. Like, I get why yeah, he wasn't yeah. automatically included. I think it would have been nice of her and it would have made sense of her to be like, do you want to come with? But he very much was like, well, she's the person who could solve this. So I'll just give it to her. 
Yeah, plus we know Tuesday, like, she never reaches out first. Mm-hmm. And I think he understands that as well. So I was very glad of that moment because I was I did not want like a misunderstanding, like jealousy tension thing going on. He was just kind of like, well, and then he got over it. But even even while he's still feeling slightly off about it, he does accept Lila's brunch invitation on Tuesday's behalf for her, which I thought was very sweet of him. Like Dex, kind of the best, to be honest. Yeah. No, what a good friend to have for someone who's definitely not getting as much love in return. <laughs> for sure, for sure. He's doing more than he asked to. Absolutely. And he, uh, I mean, skipping a bit, but like, it is interesting that the only reason Tuesday is getting this far in the puzzles is because of the people around her. Like, mm-hmm. it's Dory who solves the first bit, and then Dex leads them to the underground theater for the next bit. Yeah, it's kind of like the group is assembling around her, just not at the same time. So she has one scene that's just with Archie and then one with with uh, Dory and like one with uh, Dex and Archie. So it seems like th- there is a crew here. They're just not all a unit. Yes. But I do wonder if they will become one. Like I kind of wonder if we're going to find ourselves in a final scene in the book where everyone's like, you know, gathered around the same table putting the last pieces of the puzzle together or if it's going to kind of remain this way. No, I hope they all get together. I mean, Archie can choke, but like the rest of them, I hope they're <laughs> Ooh, all together. Now we got the opinions, yeah. <laughs> the rest of them are so sweet, though. I hope so. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, for me, I just, I would be happy with that, but I would also be just as happy with Dory just like coming out from the woodwork, like on her mm-hmm. own, solving the thing and winning it all, whatever it is, you know? Yeah. I got a soft spot for Dory. Yeah, Dory, she's trying her best, you know? <laughs> um. So we get the brunch. And uh, Lila is there going through it. Uh, she has her own gay best friend, Bert. Dex, who is just hopping off of a relationship, mind you, <laughs> instantly falls in love with Bert. Instantly. He's like, I don't believe in love at first sight, but I definitely am in love with this man at first sight. <laughs> it's Absolutely. no questions about it. Textbook, like, uh, upsetting, honestly. <laughs> I mean, Dex very clearly has, like, some commitment issues going on. Yeah. Yeah, because I was, like, also confused at the beginning if, like, he had been broken up with or if he broke up with the other dude. But either way, he was, like, I want to be proposed to, but also not. I Just very confused. I think he just, he's very much a I don't know what I want kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, because he does think he's going to get broken up with or engaged to. And then he breaks it up with his boyfriend instead. For fair reasons. Like, neither of mm-hmm. them are kind of being themselves. You know, the classic. But it's also kind of, like you're like not willing to show your real self to somebody and obviously he's going to do that with Bert Mm. Uh, I think he kind of has already yeah maybe in the one moment he shouldn't I'm very suspicious of Bert right now yeah Bert (sighs) is kind of cringe I'll put it as it is (laughs) you think he's cringe (laughs) that's not we're getting now this is more extreme than I thought (laughs) it's just like there's something about there is something weird like very clearly, Lila and Bert are championing, like, Tuesday and Dex, I think, in this story. Like, they want them to win, but they also won't share information about yeah. it. But they're, they're involved in, like, some capacity. And I think it's interesting that Vince had, like, the whole Poe scenario going on, and now Burr is very clear. Like, his name's, last name's Hatmaker. Like, mm. and he has a white rabbit tattoo. He is very clearly leaning into the Alice in Wonderland vibe. And he yeah. even asks, or, like, says to Dex, what does he say my friends call me rabbit or something like that oh yeah i don't yeah i I want to block that that from my memory yeah (laughs) yeah it was awful that was not uh, yeah not fun i do think he tried to give dex a hint with the galahad stuff i just haven't looked it over enough like thought about it enough but it is definitely something to look out for that um library scene that comes later with the the king arthur galahad stuff yeah i feel like i just don't there's a weird thing going on. Yes, I, there's the support kind of coming from Lila and Bert. I, I have hesitation about it. I, I think I trust Lila more right now, even though I still have some hesitation about her. The reason I especially am hesitating about Bert being uh, kind of in the know and like supporting them is the behavior on that date. And I know this is like later down the, the storyline, but he does, he like seems to get information from dex about their progress and then he's like okay like now i'm going to kiss you (laughs) to like Mm. incentivize and reward that behavior right so 
and if not that then to like build trust and comfort and be like in like confirm the feelings that he knows that dex is creating for him which will then lead dex to share even more information with him and so i i can't i don't know what the motivation would be but part of me feels like well why i don't think he's really just kissing him because he likes him based on how quickly it happened and in the context around it so the behavior is suspicious i just don't know why he wants that information or why he feels like he would have to do something manipulative to get it so it's also possible that that's not what's happening at all but that's that's how i've been reading it Mm. no i understand that it's difficult because everybody in this book is kind of manipulating each other to a certain extent (laughs) because to be fair dex is also trying to get information from bert Mm -hmm. and tuesday is really pushing that agenda like (laughs) she understands dex to a t so probably not great advice from her to be like hey like i i'm gonna send you to like get information from this guy you like because you like him <laughs> like uh, yeah. great way to start a foundation of a relationship there yeah but at the brunch we also meet uh some of the other arches right we meet emerson which is one of the younger sisters and we meet constance which is the mother and was there somebody else there no right i think that's up both of them that's it yeah okay uh emerson seems normal gal who came from money i don't think she cares too much about anything she definitely saw archie with tuesday in that photo but i don't know what she's gonna do about it yet it seems like it should be relevant but it doesn't also seem like like i feel like we would we were supposed to not we were supposed to but i was expecting to see something about that by now so if it really mattered i don't know i can't imagine it mattered much i think it depends on what is happening in that family because yeah. constance is kind of leading it um edgar senior has oh i guess we should mention edgar uh senior who was in charge of the company the whatever they do company it's you know whatever um he got on a yacht with nathaniel they went off and only nathaniel came back and edgar's been missing ever since and obviously that puts a lot of sus on nathaniel Mm mm-hmm which is why I was so worried when Nathaniel seemed to be our love interest. Yes. Not yeah. the case anymore. Yeah. And obviously there's some kind of fracturing in the family because you have Nathaniel who wants to take over the company and thinks he should and is very clearly either a psychopath or a sociopath. We don't know which one yet. And Archie is Edgar Jr., right? Mm -hmm. so very clearly the favored son, I would say. That's my assumption based on the name. Uh, which might be a wrong assumption. I might be incorrect Maybe originally, about that. yeah. Right now, it seems very weird, but... Yeah, but he's very... He, he's obviously distant from his family. So Emerson coming into play, it could be based on who she gets along with most. Or she just might not care. I, I can't yeah. tell yet, to be honest. But messy, messy family to marry into Tuesday. I wouldn't. Right. <laughs> it, to me, it just mostly seemed like Emerson was gaining entertainment from it yeah i could see that yeah i don't know i mean it probably isn't just that but but we get the brunch we get the weird vibes because the prices and the arches kind of had a a weird rivalry or like a weird past when they were neighbors they didn't get along very well well tuesday claims it's like the property castle question mark thing i don't believe that for a second though (laughs) so i'm curious to figure out what it actually is yeah so we do get some I guess, personal details during that brunch. And then we also learn Lila wants Tuesday to win. And also, like, Lila's backstory. She's only been married to Price for, like, three-ish years. She used to be a teacher, so very normal uh, background, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, compared to all these rich folks, yeah. (laughs) Absolutely. Uh, Possibly pregnant, we learn later. Yeah, that was an interesting observation, for sure. (laughs) Yeah, like, why, why are... I mean... It, it it was cool of Tuesday to be like, here's some reasons why. I'm like, I don't know why it matters if she's pregnant, but this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, it is interesting uh, to bring it up. Like, why does it matter? You Unless know? it's just to like, here's my thing though. Like, it, I was gonna say maybe it's just to like verify and like prove that Tuesday's really good at what she does with the sleuthing. But mm. there's just some other things in the story that kind of fight that. So I don't know. We'll see. Okay, and then what happens? Dex and Tuesday are talking on a bench about something. Dex has the thought of going to this underground theater, which is kind of like a rumored theater um, he learned about from his ex-boyfriend. And it seems crazy, but they see Archie there and they all kind of break in 
and it ends up being the right place. It's actually not a theater also. It's like a... More of an auditorium, but... Yeah, yeah. Somewhere they play music, so... Concert Not hall. exactly where you would find King Lear being performed, but yeah. close enough. I, this this scene I, th- I, ca- I thought was important, particularly where Nathaniel... Where they catch Nathaniel in the acts, or not in real Nathaniel, Archie, because there's this whole interaction of like, oh, I, th- I thought you were going to like get in touch with me again after that whole situation and we're going to continue working together and now i just find you here doing it on your own and he's like oh i like thought you were gonna call me like oh my god and so there is something real bad vibes about that whole scene yeah that is true i forgot about that because he like abandoned her right like it's like no you need to call her because right now you're in her on her bad side (laughs) like why would she think that and also, I think he maybe even said he was going to contact her after when he was running off. So yeah, he did say he would contact her. So now we've gotten to a point where like Archie, uh, not only does he not want his family to know about things, but oddly, maybe didn't want Tuesday to know about things. It's very confusing. Yeah, I could see it maybe as like he had gone to Tuesday because he wanted somebody anonymous and now she's not anonymous. So mm-hmm. he's like casually trying to drop her. They've gotten too close. Yeah, but it, it they end up there at the same time very lucky coincidence i guess mm-hmm. and and then they argue obviously and then <laughs> tuesday's like we're arguing but actually i want to have sex with him oh my god yeah <laughs> there's so many drops of this and it's like so direct right it's not like like the the words are always sexy right hot like it's never like what a handsome man <laughs> you know <laughs> it's always very yeah. right to the point and i mean I could gripe about like aggression somehow being like linked to being sexy. <laughs> Couldn't be me. Oof, uh, yeah. But you know, we don't need to get into it. I suppose. I I wouldn't hate it if if I thought that the story wouldn't be a romance for those two characters. I honestly wouldn't hate it. Like I wouldn't be like uh, upset by like being like oh like he's a very attractive man like he's fitting a trope yada yada. But it's just the mm-hmm. fact that they are totally the romantic couple that <laughs> makes it like oh like. Why are we talking about him this way? <laughs> yeah. Especially from a character who, like, doesn't seem to care mm-hmm. for the most part. Like, she's 33. She lives alone. Like, she's chilling. Like, I, I want to bring this up later, but she very much makes a point of, of, like, not caring if she has a partner. Yeah. But I don't know. Sex seems to matter a lot in this book for some reason. <laughs> Dex literally calls him, like, a big bag of sex or something like that. <sighs> Of course he does. What is that? What does that mean? It's gross. Puzzle related, though. (laughs) They end up in the theater (laughs) and they kind of figure out the symbols are like codes for certain words, basically. I loved the way that they were like, oh, you guys know what a cipher is, but you don't know what a code is. A code is just a simpler cipher. Honestly, I didn't know there was a difference. (laughs) Well, I guess. Maybe that's like a classical version of the word code. To me, I was like, this distinction is very pedantic. Yeah, I don't think it matters too much. Um, I guess if you're writing it, you want to write the right word. But sure. regardless, they figure it out. Some of them are so easy. It's like coffin is for death. Like yeah. some of them are that simple. But um, they do work it out and they find uh, like a message about like either working by yourself, working in pairs. I think that comes up right. So again, that multiple people participating type of aspect. Mm-hmm. And they find 51 packets of money and each packet includes a playing card and so this group of three they take two of the packets i think they should have all just taken one well you know i mean imagine the black cats showing up they take all 51 because oh, there's God. 66 of them i understand what they were crazy. saying but it's like i just don't trust i don't trust uh archie and like if mm. archie runs off with one and then dex and uh Tuesday are sharing one together. I'm like, this feels inefficient. Like, you guys should just not have your own. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think benefit-wise, like, Dex for sure is not going to do anything without Tuesday. So yeah, that's I don't think anything bad is going to come out of them only grabbing two. Um, the interesting part is it's only 51 of them. And yes. we get, you know, it's like, where's the missing card? Because there's 52, I would suppose. Um, I think Tuesday figures it out just before we stopped. But we can talk about that later. We'll get there, yeah. But it's it's something about you need to like spend the money and like use your imagination and creativity, something to that effect. I can't remember yeah. the wordage, but it's very vague, super vague. It's more vague than I think is useful. <laughs> like, I don't know how you're supposed to go somewhere with this, especially because 
I, I can understand uh, Vince being kind of a creative seeming guy that you'd make a competition that leans that way. But if there are no, if there's no Vince to judge the results, I don't really know where this is going to go. Mm. It does feel like there's probably a pretty good reason it's $13,000, though. Maybe that's just because of like, you know, we're on the card deck thing and there's 13 in a suit or whatever. But yeah, and then also the missing card has to come into play. Mm. Yeah, my issue was like, unless you're working with everybody else or everybody's sharing information, you don't know what card is missing. Yeah. So if that's what's important, it's hard to tell. But um, like I said, I think Tuesday uh, figured it out. Mm hmm. Or at least has an assumption that I think yeah, is probably going to be accurate. I can't imagine they mentioned it for another reason, but I'm excited to share what I thought it was. Yeah. And yeah, Tuesday really appreciates Dex in this moment. I thought it was very sweet. Um, I'm hoping this <laughs> doesn't go wrong somehow. Yeah. I'm hoping they just ride this and are just good friends instead of doing that like cliche things fall apart and then they get back together thing. We don't need that. Please. God, no. I agree. And then what else happens? We get Abby background with tuesday which again brings into question if ghosts are fucking real yeah it's crazy how detailed it got right because it's like the most jarring part of this book i think so far like first of all it's it's basically a flashback right it's mm -hmm. a flashback chapter for the most part and then we get abby her voice again a lot more than the the brief one we got in the tunnel and we get information from abby that tuesday supposedly shouldn't know right about um yeah i think it was about like the detective the right detec yeah the detective the, i was gonna say the investigation yeah and so it brings into question like is this actually a paranormal book we still don't know like there could be a reason tuesday knows that information and she doesn't remember knowing it um especially because that period of her of her life was so like terrible and apparently it gets much worse we don't know what the much worse is but yeah capitalized much worse yes so it's an event but yeah it's it's still very much this could be some kind of paranormal story yeah it makes me wonder if we'll figure out if we will figure out what happened to abby by the end of the story yeah i mean that's a theory conversation for mm -hmm. sure but it's it's brought up a lot yeah. so you would think you know it's just i don't see how it would happen but it feels like it should <laughs> right and i think the puzzle's kind of on pause for the rest of the time we're reading this but we do get information about Nathaniel Arches. The real Nathaniel Arches. The, the real Nathaniel, yes. Who is, as Tuesday first thought from her research, a, kind of a fucking creep, to yeah. be honest. Plain asshole. Narcissistic. Yeah. Only cares about people if they're functional, like, you know, that kind of stuff. It's, and it is convinced that he was gifted. <laughs> so. Yes. And he brings up Archie as Edgar and, like, edgar um or archie like harassing him with postcards and other stuff and i'm like <laughs> what the what could he possibly be sending on postcards i know that's like so traumatic for you so that beef is very interesting i mean their father's dead or missing so probably has something to yeah do with that. i i have some thoughts <laughs> the fact that they're basically identical though is very interesting yeah uh, at first i thought they were just twins like flat out twins but apparently Nathaniel's like 39 and then Archie's like 33 or something like that mm -hmm. or 32. So absolutely not twins. But they, I guess, are basically the same person because Tuesday does not realize. This part is nuts, I think. Uh, I yes, I agree. I could not believe this even a little bit that after we spend, you know, basically the entire first half of the book establishing how much of a sleuth Tuesday is that she would miss this information I, it just it doesn't make sense it doesn't make sense to me yeah i thought it was weird the fact that we didn't even know an edgar jr existed at all like he he very clearly was like born there were records <laughs> yes, for him yeah i would think that she would have seen like pictures of the family from the past or something like obviously there was a time where they were all a unit so i would have think that she had seen pictures with both of them in it or seen two separate pictures of them and known to distinguish them i don't think like pseudo twins would throw tuesday off based on all the other things she can do right because it could maybe be understandable if edgar was mentioned um by tuesday in the beginning but she just thought it was nathaniel because nathaniel's who she invited maybe we could get away with that but yeah, the sure. fact that edgar jr is like a a phantom of a human <laughs> and has like never existed anywhere in the public forum not even 
against his own volition. Like he's part of one of the most famous families to exist. And you're telling me nobody knows his name? Like, right. what? And he doesn't get mentioned at brunch or anything either. So I know, like he would have had to have been cut off from his family when he was a baby. Like, <laughs> what are you talking about? That's, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just, it doesn't line up. It doesn't, but we accept it because yeah, we have to. Right? What that's else can story. be done? <laughs> I, I also have to say, though, like she so set herself up here. Like I was so nervous at the beginning of this chapter when she gets this call from the assistant of Nathaniel Arces. She's like, why wouldn't he just text me? I'm like, yes, girl. Why wouldn't he just text you? Do your sleuth thing. And figure out why he didn't text you. Don't just get into a car. And the, when they were like, we're sending a car for you. I was like, absolutely not. We are not getting in a random car. And she did. Yeah. <laughs> I just, I thought she was getting abducted. I thought we were going to get introduced to a new, well, we got introduced to a new character, but I thought we were going to get introduced in, to a new, more malicious character who was invested in the competition and it was like abducting her. Like that's the direction I thought it was going. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Like she could have fucking died <laughs> yes it was to really be bad clear, when she, she like been writes up that text and is like never mind i was like no <laughs> like what if you never get to text anyone again <laughs> don't do that crazy behavior really crazy but it works out i guess i think what happens nathaniel like tries to buy her or like turn her against archie and she she's like no way which is like she's very um she very much wants to have sex with archie <laughs> The fact that she's protecting him this much. It's crazy. Oh, man. Well, to be fair, I wouldn't give information to Nathaniel either. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's like, I'd rather not give it to him even if I didn't, even if, as I do, do not trust uh, Archie. Yeah, I just like, if Tuesday keeps working with Archie after this fact, it's like wild to me because you're inserting yourself into such a messy family drama mm -hmm. for, for why, you know? Like, you do not need Archie for this, but she's making a stance whether it's for just like integrity reasons which is very much possible and i think would make sense or because she you know has already admitted to liking archie well liking you know we'll see what happens mm -hmm. but yeah very confused about this whole situation but also glad because i really did not want nathaniel to be like nathaniel in my head very clearly like did something to his father yes, so i was yeah. like we're not <laughs> we're not making him the love interest are yeah. we and we're not thank goodness so, do we think then that lila was referring to the actual nathaniel when she was like i don't trust nathaniel because since they didn't really bring up edgar jr yeah yeah i think when she said don't like stay away from nathaniel arches i think she meant like nathaniel arches for sure like it's like a redundant not redundant a, a useless warning because i don't know how you would trust someone like that i mean i guess depending on who you are you get offered like millions of dollars you know some people would take it yeah but you know that it, <laughs> if you're doing that you know it's not for a good reason <laughs> like, i don't know yeah. you just think you know put two brain cells on it you know there's something shady yeah but i guess it depends on how much you care yeah like if All you right, take your money the and then like bounce yeah. like you know it's whatever exactly tuesday's very much involved yeah it's not what she wants we already kind of talked about the Burton Dex at the library thing. <laughs> so Yep, we got the library. And then we go to another library. Shocking. <laughs> I for sure thought it was the same library at first, and Dory and Dex were about to meet up. Like, because Dex had just figured something out about mm. the Galahad clue or whatever. But that's not what happens. That makes a lot of sense, though. Yeah. Dory meets Ned uh, Kennedy, who I thought, to be honest, we, we hear the, that name before um, because the Black Cats group which Ned is a part of, had found the symbol clue somewhere mm -hmm. else. So somebody is in the moment updating and working on this puzzle as it's being done so people can keep doing it, right? Um, and Ned figured out the the symbols and was like, I don't remember if he had gone to the underground theater, but I think he was like scoping out the area, something to that effect. Mm -hmm. I thought he was a grown-ass man, to be honest. <laughs> um, it turns out he's like fucking 14 15 same yeah. story to be fair when we got introduced to dory i didn't realize she was a child i mean it didn't take that long but it wasn't until they directly said it i think that i learned that mm. i thought she was actually younger than 14 oh, yeah. <laughs> but yeah ned is excited about what he was able to solve um and dory mentions that she knows tuesday which is you know kind of super cool thing to do yeah, a flex a fl absolutely and Ned believes her, and they he shares what he figured out 
even though he's really not supposed to, but yeah. he does anyway. It, it kind of, that surprised me because the way I thought it was going to go was him trying to pull information out of Dory. <laughs> mm. It seems like, unlike what I'm suspicious of is happening in the Dex and Bert situation, it seems like Dory might have the upper hand here. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I don't think she's even trying to have, have the upper hand. Mm -hmm. um, I think she generally just like wants to be involved so badly. Yeah, well, yeah, especially if um, Tuesday's not involving her. Yeah, and she knew of ned and ned knows of her even though it didn't, if it didn't seem like that at first so i'm just suspicious of everyone <laughs> i would agree i feel like when there's so much at stake and also mysterious disappearances it makes sense yeah i think our characters could stand to be more suspicious even if it doesn't end up mm. being right they could just they could hesitate a little bit more like you know like like i mentioned with tuesday at the fundraiser just kind of like tuesday at the fundraiser just was like i my job is researching people like you're you and here's everything i know about you i was like you are giving way too much information not because of this upcoming competition but because it sounds like you could lose your job for sharing that sort of information so just i think people in this story in general have a propensity to overshare with people they think are hot. Yes, I'd agree. And uh, we won't be using the language of hot, but <laughs> even the children in this follow a similar mindset. Yes. Because Ned, like, I, I don't, we obviously don't get his thoughts, but it, I think a mixture of him being excited and also I think he does kind of like Dory a little bit. Mm -hmm. He shares this information. And Dory is like interested or wants to be liked by Ned. I don't know if she actually likes him at all, but she thinks she's supposed to because they cannot be friends. Right, right. I think she at least likes the attention, right? She's like, I've never had someone like fawn for me, you know? So I think she's she's feeling like, oh, like I'm having the high school experience I'm supposed to, whether or not it's like someone she foresees herself like wanting to be with. I mean, I think they will. I think so too. Um, I think <laughs> but I think that's where it's starting. has you know? a pair, but... Mm -hmm. Um, that's basically it though. We're caught up. Yeah. Everybody kind of has the symbol information. And I think at this point, the 51 packets are probably going to go pretty quickly. So everybody's kind of on the same footing. Oh, last thing to note, which plays into the 51 packets is Tuesday notes the Arches company. It like is or can be like said as ACE. Right. It's like the abbreviation acronym, whatever you want to call it. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> and. So, like, that being a playing card, I think, is very interesting. And I think Tuesday is also thinking similarly. Like, something about that. There's something to it. Yeah. I also think, this is a new theory. I don't think it means anything. But not the book. I don't think it's the book. Maybe it is the book. I can't remember. I haven't read it in a long time. But at least in the movie. Uh, Alice in Wonderland, it's the playing cards, right? Mm -hmm. As, like, um, the knights and stuff. So that and Bert's connection to Alice in Wonderland is interesting. I didn't think about that. I don't know if it's going to mean anything, but it could. But still, I think Ace, the company, is the, the most important piece of info we have right now. Mm -hmm. Don't know what it means, but that's what we got. Uh, so if we're using that to move into theories, then I'm going to bring up one that I had that is probably not the case. <laughs> but um, when we were initially introduced to the 51 packets and also them having playing cards in them, my initial thought was that someone had beat them there and that's why there were 51 mm. like someone had just come in taken one packet and left and there were 52 to start there was one for each card and they ran with it so i don't think that's the case now i think that would be cool but i don't think that's the case because yeah i think it's supposed to be a hint towards ace or to like pay attention to a missing card but i don't know right like think of other people or if the idea is lots of people are going to come in and grab some of these packets like there there's only 51 if it, it, there's only certainly 51 if they're the first ones there and they don't know that. Yeah. Um, everyone afterwards going to get less. Yeah. I think the only clue to that would be Tuesday having the scroll, which was like a clue on its own. Like it was a leg up. It was, you know, she was able to get ahead because of that. But I mean, Ned clearly found it not that soon after. So I'm assuming black cats are pretty quick in getting the rest of the packets. So yeah, it's entirely possible there was a 52. It would just be curious how they got there because yeah. they would have to do it through the same method that ned found it which would have to happen after tuesday and archie found the brick wall well unless there's some weird behind the scenes stuff happening with like bert and lila or something mm, you know like someone who might be a little too. bit more in the know on the on the family or friend side 
that's possible yeah i feel like i'm like building up this story in my head that there's going to be some big villain at the end of this story <laughs> that hasn't shown face yet i don't know i feel like i've done this to myself before in other books but that's what that's maybe informing my theories a little bit mm. yeah it's not a bad idea though i mean because 52 is like very clearly what the number is meant to be right mm -hmm. so we could go either way other theories just laying it out straight <laughs> Why does Archie approach Tuesday? Weird. I mean, clearly it's because he doesn't want his family to know. We realize that's because Nathaniel and him are beefing for some reason that we don't understand yet. But we don't know what that is, right? I think my running theory right now is, well, kind of goes in a couple different directions. Um, I think Archie might have been closer to the Price family. This helped by the fact that they were neighbors. I think he might have been closer to that side of, of the family and maybe chose their side. Mm. Maybe the reason he's he's been away is because he was traveling like Price was. We don't really know. So maybe he wants part of Price's collection because he just loves Price yeah. uh, platonically. Please, for the love of God. <laughs> <laughs> in regards to wanting something specific in Price's collection, though, my thought is Nathaniel killed Edgar Sr., right yeah because two people go out on a ship one comes back what do you think happened right like, let's be <laughs> obvious here and my idea is that something in the price collection proves how edgar died or incriminates nathaniel in some way mm. and that's what archie wants or maybe archie is like dory and that he thinks he can talk to a ghost and he wants to talk to his dad right and oh, figure out what happened too um, and if this book is paranormal, that's very much possible, right? And so maybe it's not actual evidence that Nathaniel did it, but like ghostly evidence that Nathaniel did it. Or like the items, right? Like he, he, we've, they, they've talked about he has all the money in the world, so he obviously isn't doing it for money, but maybe it is that, yeah, he had like these specific ghost items that maybe they can do something. Yeah, and then the postcards could be maybe Archie searching for the truth of what happened to his dad, and yeah. like that's how he's harassing Nathaniel with like you know that kind of information and now archie getting involved in this and if there is actual evidence or like ghosts do exist then maybe that's why nathaniel's so worried about it but that's that's the vibe i'm getting both in regards to edgar senior who was definitely murdered uh, i'd be shocked if he was still alive and then the archie situation i don't know if you have anything to add to be honest no i think that's just it cool <laughs> <laughs> I did, yeah i didn't i didn't think about any of that stuff so okay next ghostly encounter <laughs> i guess would be abby right yeah. like she disappears at a lighthouse in salem uh she was tuesday's best friend uh we don't know what happened to her but her ghost does say she was killed and she wants to figure out what happened this was of course when tuesday was still in high school so it's been a very long time since then but it is a story that keeps getting brought up so I feel like it's a story that's going to matter. Yeah, I 100% think we're going to get a connecting thread between the, her death and all the other ones. It's just interesting, right? Because they are in Massachusetts, so they're close enough, but they are a distance from each other. Mm -hmm. Like the Tillerman house is uh, more to the south, and then you have um, Edgar disappearing. I'm assuming it was somewhere in Boston. It was in Nantucket Harbor, so somewhere there. Abby disappears in salem uh and then i don't remember what happened i mean dory's mom was just an accident but they were like in the suburbs of boston for that too i think ah okay okay so like they're far enough apart and also why would abby be connected to edgar senior in any way it's strange yeah so yeah i don't know what's going on with that Maybe that's where like the paranormal side comes in <laughs> like I, I know that it'd probably take a lot of build to find something in the second half of the story, that's a paranormal explanation, but I can't, I, I mean, these people are so disconnected that I do think that there's going to be some sort of threat. I think the water observation is astute, so I, I think there's likely going to be something that is uh, not a result of these people being connected in a way we don't, but maybe just like a paranormal reason that explains why these deaths are so important and converging in this story. And the water connection is, is something I, I figured out before, or I thought about before we recorded this. It's just everybody dying either at or near water dory's mom um is basically trapped under like in a river when her car accident happens abby dies by the lighthouse like i said 
and then Edgar Sr. is on the boat. He disappears. So it's like a lot of stuff that's connected to water. Makes sense, I think, for Massachusetts. It could just <laughs> right. be a coincidence, but it is very interesting. Also because Abby in the past, like Tuesday mentions that it was raining that night, but Abby felt like like she really pushed to go, right? right? So it's like, why did she need to go to the light station? Like what was happening that night? Mm-hmm. Very strange. And it could be nothing like uh, Archie wanting something to talk to his father. Could It could be the same conclusion for Tuesday. Like she gets something in the collection and she's able to help Abby. Or maybe they realize nothing in the collection works, but Tuesday can do it. She can actually talk to ghosts, right? Uh, and so she talks to Abby and she talks to Edgar Sr. And she does all of that on her own. Like that could be the conclusion we reach. Mm-hmm. But we also might just get something in the collection that helps her. I kind of wonder what we might learn from Ghost Abby in the rest of the book. Because if there is something about the lighthouse, like I wonder if we'll end up going to the lighthouse at some point. Like if there was something more, maybe then we get like a storyline connection as opposed to just a paranormal connection. Yeah. I mean, we have a lot of the book left to go. We do actually move around pretty quickly, I think between the different characters we get and Mm -hmm. like for the most part what's going on so we might actually travel i think at some point we have to go to the tillerman house i feel like it's so important like something happened there i think we're gonna end there i don't know how what but given that it was the beginning i think we're gonna end there yeah that might be the case and then also tuesday going up to salem going back to the light station that could be possible Mm -hmm. but yeah the much worse she experiences uh tuesday in her past yeah, don't know that's a good point could too. just be a mental breakdown but yeah i don't really know i guess speaking of abby like i have i would say i pretty strongly believe at this point that she's not just like a figment of tuesday's imagination like tuesday is kind of suspicious of that until she gets that new information but i think i think the point of that is to be like no like she really is she is kind of a ghostly presence not just in her head it's just so interesting because abby does not come up a lot it, and it takes so long to come up too yeah for sure way. and even in the present we got like a line that could have been passed yeah. off like it's not that much of a thing but if she starts to speak more in the present it like we're already halfway in like that's such an interesting way to write i think something yes. paranormal like this very much burying the lead yeah mm-hmm, mm-hmm, for sure uh other theories though <laughs> Ooh, I have no other like mis- mystery theories mm-hmm. unless you have something else. I feel like there's not much else to say. I'm kind of curious like who put everything in its place for this and mm. like how ahead it was put in place. They also like mentioned like, oh, like it rained in this spot. So like was it was the implication there that someone is like re putting clues down when they wash away? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. that made me very curious about who's involved. And like, for example, like also Lila gets the pogram, as she refers to it as like, how did who is who is really truly in the know if it's not even Lila? Someone has to be. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, I wasn't thinking about them as like a character we had to care about too much. I was thinking it was just like, you know, somebody who was enacting his will, like they were just doing their job. But this is such a weird thing to do right like even if your client is a billionaire like this is a lot of effort to yeah, go through it is so it is a very curious character and price would have to trust you to do everything as he's asking yeah so it's more of a question than a theory but i'm definitely curious about it no it's an important question i do uh um it's not a theory but maybe like a wish list <laughs> item poe um died in baltimore and i live in baltimore (laughs) so i would love to see a baltimore you know reference connection like i don't think the book's gonna relocate but that would be cool (laughs) if they're like well poe died in in baltimore this is the end of the book there's a death aspect to whatever life after death so it would be cool for them to to at least reference that yeah to be fair i didn't know poe was born in boston so one they were bringing everything up. I was like, why isn't this in Baltimore? Yeah. Like, because that's what you think of when you think of Poe is Baltimore, yeah. I feel like. But maybe it's because of the shock of it, right? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, we don't associate. But also, like, I feel like mm, every major city in the Northeast has, like, a Poe claim. But <laughs> it's hard to be mm. born and died, so. So, yeah, a lot of questions still. 
the puzzle so far super fun i'm actually enjoying it me too i wish there was more to like grab onto as a reader to like be like i want to figure yeah. this out but also like i'm not gonna sit there and figure it out so i don't really care <laughs> yeah for sure we are not given enough information to figure it out ourselves it is not that kind of mystery but i mean at least lightly i think there are some things we can grab onto like the 51 cards like even we can see that that's yeah. strange so there's something going on there we don't have enough information to make any claims but you do kind of feel like you're playing along very lightly or at least you're enjoying the ride enough that it doesn't really matter i think because the puzzle so far has been fun which i think is super necessary right mm -hmm. a little weird that it's like a death puzzle yeah. but <laughs> we'll let it go yeah again you know they had the 39 clues vibes and that was a whole series about someone who made a death puzzle so for kids too <laughs> <laughs> So hopefully, hopefully it still keeps focusing on the puzzle aspect. Yeah, and not to like into the relationship. <laughs> yes, but we'll see. Yeah. So I, I mean, for halfway in the book, it could be more romance than it is. So I'll yeah, take it. I agree. Maybe there's something to be said about keeping it to a superficial attraction because <laughs> it's allowed us to get into the story otherwise. And I for sure will complain next episode. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, no, com not really that many complaints so far. Yeah. I was going to say no complaints, but that'd be a fucking lie. No, definitely enjoying but it. But nothing that matters. Yeah, Looking for forward sure. to the second half. It's been a pretty easy read. And, and I feel like not an in when I say easy read, sometimes I mean like, I feel like this is like the target audience of this is someone who's still in grade school. And that's not what I mean for this. One. <laughs> it's just, it flows very easily. It's, it's, you know, I, I don't feel like I have to like, you know, crunch my brain too hard to follow along with what's going on, but it's interesting. Yeah. Also really interesting that we're getting so many character perspectives. Mm -hmm. I actually really like that. Me too. That I like not just Tuesday. Really loved the switch to Dex's perspective when they were in that basement theater situation. Mm -hmm. So that's part one. Part two to come. And, you know, we'll talk about everything else. Mm -hmm. And if you have your own thoughts or theories, as always, it's 5050 underscore books on Twitter. Uh, links are also in the description. And we will finish next time, review next time, and let you know what we're reading next next time. The usual. And that's that. Yes? Yep. Sounds good to me. Bye. Bye-bye.